Hello everyone, the greetings of the day. Today in this session we are going to talk about a recent topic which is making rounds that is about synthetic biology. So today we are going to talk about synthetic biology and related issues with respect to synthetic biology. Now, what is synthetic biology? The word itself says biology is the study of life and synthetic means artificial. However, synthetic biology does not mean that it is the artificial study of life, rather it is a methodology, an approach to create artificial life, life forms or products related to life artificially. So, synthetic biology is nothing but it is the artificial process through which you create artificial life, artificial life forms or any product that is related to life for example, the genome, for example, the DNA, for example, the proteins, cells, lipids, whatever, but you are creating them artificially and not naturally. This is synthetic biology and therefore, a proper definition of synthetic biology entails that synthetic biology is a new interdisciplinary area that involves application of engineering principles to biology. All right. So, synthetic biology is applying engineering principles to biology. You are applying engineering principles to biology. That is, you are redesigning and fabricating the biological components and systems that do not already exist in natural world. So, you are redesigning and you are fabricating the biological systems which are not found naturally anywhere by using artificial redesigning techniques. This is known as synthetic biology. That is, you are trying to go for de novo synthesis. You are trying to go for de novo synthesis, de novo synthesis. What is de novo synthesis? De novo synthesis basically means starting from the beginning, you are creating a de novo life and life components. For example, you are going for the chemical synthesis of DNA. You are not naturally extracting DNA from somewhere, but you are using chemical compositions to create an artificial stretch of DNA. It is a technique or it is a process under what is known as the synthetic biology. And today with the latest developments in science and technology, it is possible to create a fully operational possible biological system. You are able to create artificial proteins, you are able to create chemical DNA, you are able to create other organic molecules which are found in the cells. Getting my point? So, this is what is synthetic biology. Now, many of you must be coming across the idea that whether synthetic biology is same as genome sequencing. Whether synthetic biology is same as genome sequencing or let us say genetic engineering. Can we say that synthetic biology and genetic engineering are or genome editing one and the same thing? The answer is no. To some extent, yes. Gene editing is involved in synthetic biology, but synthetic biology is a much wider term than genome editing. If you look at the magnitude of the change in the genetic composition in genetic engine engineering or genome editing is very small. All right, it is very small. You are you are typically stitching together very short stretch of DNA or you are changing the DNA at very minute level or you are introducing the DNA from some other organisms, but here everything is natural. Here everything is natural, but in case of synthetic biology, your magnitude is tremendously very high where you are incorporating the life components such as DNA, proteins and other organic molecules 
creating them naturally de novo without using any help of any biological system. Therefore, synthetic biology is much much wider term than genome sequencing or gene editing. Now, where does this concept of synthetic biology emerge from? The concept of synthetic biology it emerged from the works that took place in the United States. In the US, there is an institution known as Craig Venter Institute. C -A C -R -A -I -G, C-R-A-I-G, Craig Venter, V-E-N-T-E-R. In the United States, there is a Craig Venter Institute where in the year 2010, for the first time an artificial life form was created. Alright, for the first time an artificial life form was created and the name of that life form is Cynthia. Alright, it is Cynthia. It was in Cynthia where for the first time an artificial life was created or life form was created which was given the name Cynthia and from here the origin of synthetic biology can be traced to. In the year 2010 when synthetic biology was in its infancy you must appreciate that by 2016 synthetic biology became a full fledged industry with a lot of applications. And this industry in 2016 was valued at dollar 11 billion. And it is projected that by 2025, the synthetic biology industry is going to be, the synthetic biology industry is going to be to the tune of 100 billion US dollars. This is the scope of development of synthetic biology that is projected with this particular technology or this particular field growing only in the year 2010. Emerging in 2010 within a period of 6 years it became an industry worth 11 billion and within a period of next 20 next 15 years and from today it is just what 4 more years the industry is packed at 100 billion US dollars which is one of the fastest growing industry. If you talk about the application of synthetic biology this synthetic biology is used to build new biological systems without altering the existing natural biological systems. The synthetic biology redesign the existing biological parts and expand the set of natural protein functions or new processes. For example, you can see the application of synthetic biology in production of modified rice. This modified rice is synthetically or chemically fortified with beta carotene which is a very essential nutrient to prevent the deficiency of you can say vitamin A. Synthetic biology is used in engineering the microbes to tackle many of the big problems for the mankind such as the re-engineered or engineered microbes to go for destroying the oil spill. Biodegradation ke liye jo microorganisms, bioremediation ke liye jo microorganisms use ho rahe hain ki date mein, they all are chemically synth synthesized. They are the products of synthetic biology. You can use synthetic biology to design and construct a simple genome for a natural bacterium. For example, these days, this perfume industry is making use of yeast which is synthetically changed in such a manner that it produces rose oil. You have added certain uh, chemical DNA into the yeast DNA such that this yeast is producing the rose oil which is used by the perfume industry for, crea for, per, per, for creation or you can say for synthesis of perfumes which have a smell of rose. Now, the thing is this, if you look at the synthetic biology, it has certain social and ethical implications. What are the social and ethical implications of synthetic biology? The first and the foremost is that by interfering with the life. So let's look at social and ethical implications of synthetic biology. So number one, because you are creating life naturally because you are altering life naturally 
there is a question that arises which has an ethical underpinning that is moral boundaries set in by nature transgressed by human beings using synthetic biology. So, that there is a question of moral boundaries, there is a question of moral boundaries that is are we transgressing the moral boundaries related to creation of life form which is supposed to take place naturally. The second, the second ethical and social question that emerges is who will have access to this technology, who will have access to this technology because this technology is a very fancy tool. It is going to be accessed only by the super rich in the world and it is going to create a kind of inequality in terms of access to the latest biotechnology. So, there is, so there is the question related to access. Then the next question that emerges which has an environmental ethical concern and that is what will be the environmental impact, what will be the environmental impact, what will be the impact on nature of such a playing of human being using synthetic biology. So, these are the ethical or social questions that are underlying the new emerging field of synthetic biology. Now, what is the way forward? We should not abandon synthetic biology because synthetic biology has shown us some of the tremendous applications in the field of biotech. Then what we should do? We should go for fulfilling the loopholes that are there. For example, if there are no bioethics that are right now prescribed for the bio uh, synthetic biology. So, you should go for incorporation of the bioethical standards in the various national as well as international statutes. For example, in the conservation of biological diversity CBD, you should go for incorporation of bioethical standards for the field of synthetic biology. You should go for incorporation of biological ethics related to synthetic biology and this step has to take place in India by the department of biotechnology which is the regulatory as well as the guidelining agency that deals with synthetic biology and biotech in the country. India should come out with its own national strategy on synthetic biology to take care of all the developments that are going to take place with respect to the field of synthetic biology which has social as well as ethical underpinnings. There should be proper regulatory framework to keep the developments in synthetic biology within the framework of the ethical concerns which has been put forth by the human genome editing project. So, I think that we have done and we have covered a very significant amount of all information, all issues related to synthetic biology and with this I will close this session. I hope you had a wonderful learning experience. Do make notes of these information that has been delivered to you in this session. It is going to help you add to your science and tech notes, add to your ethical notes, ethics notes and it is going to help you in your exam tremendously. So, keep tuned for such wonderful sessions. See you soon in the next session. Take care. Bye bye everyone. Bye.